These are the photos that I've chosen to use to paint in the style of Wayne Thiebaud. And I'm going to be using this piece of cake and this and maybe a scone or scone or two. And I'm going to have them on cake stands, but this piece of pink cake will be on the surface of the table. So I'm going to mix. This is my palette. Um, at the moment, I've got a uh, Viridian Green, Cadmium Red Deep, Cobalt Blue, Cadmium Yellow Medium, Cadmium Red Light, and Titanium White and Yellow Ochre. And I think that will probably cover me for all the colours I need to use. This is a little bit of a colour I mixed earlier. It's a pale blue and I'll probably use that in the background. So to start drawing out, I'm going to take some cobalt and some cadmium red deep. And I'm just going to mix a deep purple and add quite a bit of water. And I'm going to start with the piece of cake down here and some of this will probably show through I think I need to bring that over a little bit over there a bit more red in it like that apparently um, Wayne Thiebaud grew up as a teenager in the depression and he used to be able to look at cakes in the shops but not have them so this is I think why he developed a fascination with cakes and he used to paint pies as well sorry a bit of pausing there because I'm thinking as I go I'm going to move this over a little bit and I'm not too worried about mistakes because all that will happen is I will paint over with the background color so I'm starting off very thinly and I'll bring that, oops, sorry, camera rattle, bring that in there. So on to the next piece of cake. You know, I might even bring that up a little bit. That's it. That's better. And bring this in. I don't want it touching the side of the page too much. There. And I might put a few of the raspberries in there. So going on to the cake behind, I'll place it about, I think, here. Going up there. To about there I think maybe a little bit lower and I'll put it on a plate and then this will have a little stick for a stand probably going to about there and then for the last plate which is going to go about up here. Bring it in maybe a little bit because this goes out a little bit further. And oops, sorry, I keep hitting the camera with my head because I'm trying to get it in so I get the whole thing on the screen. So it's quite close to my head as I paint. And this is where the scones will go. There's the jam. And I think I will have two. They're quite hidden by this piece of cake, so I might actually drop this bit down. So I'm just adjusting as I go. That will be cream. I don't want the cream touching the top of the cake because they're both going to be similar. So there's the jam. Actually, I could have jam coming behind this cake and then that will really stand out. So I'll put the jam over here and the, and the cream will go about here. But I will bring this down to here. And what I might do is put in a little bit of cobalt blue on this cake. And 
and I think possibly I'll drop this down also. So I'm working quite thickly with this cobalt blue. I might add a bit of white to it. So it's a little bit bolder. And this is quite a spontaneous way of working. So then this middle of here will drop down to about here. So I think that's reasonably balanced. And so I'm going to draw in the shadows. The light will be coming more or less from above. So I'll put that will go behind there like that. So it will just echo the plates. The shadow will go under here. I think that plate's too big for that piece of cake actually. So I'll make that smaller when I put the background on. And shadow going under there. And then the shadow on here, on this one. Like that. And Wayne Thiebaud often put a line going across the background to suggest the edge of the table. So I'll have that there. Okay. Now I'm ready to start work on the background and what I'm going to do is have it quite neutral. He did use a lot of pastels, so I'm going to have a pale pastel wall and then this is going to be the blue that I mixed earlier, I think. I might add a little bit of a yellow in to cool it down, to dull it down a little bit. It's a bit too loud. So I'm going to be using a brush that's very um, cheap with... Um, supposed to be bristle brush it's not a brilliant brush but I will get a lot of texture with it the paper I'm using is Winsor & Newton acrylic paper and I'm using uh, the acrylic I'm using is a, a combination of system 3 and um, golden you might want to use system 3 for this because it uh, takes a lot of paint to put all the layers on so you don't need to use your art, artist quality paint system three will do so i'm going to start off by using my white i'll use a palette knife to mix with and i'm going to mix for the wall a little bit of a pinkish purple color oops that's a little bit too strong so i'll take some of that over here A little bit of the blue. It's going to be lighter than the table, so I've gone too dark. So I'll take it over here and add a lot more white to it. That's better. A bit more blue. And I'm going to put a little bit of yellow into it just to grate up a little bit. Slightly more blue. Think that will do so this is the fun bit I'm not going to go too textured with the background because I'm going saving that for the cakes so we will put this in and I might get a little bit of this dark color showing through so I changed this I'll just have to remember what I did oh that's right so that was going to be the jam on top and I'll chop off that side because I'll have the jam over here a little bit and the cream over here so you can be very vigorous his brushwork is very confident I keep nearly trying to say was because he was active for so long and he is a hundred years old in November and I think as of 2017 he was still painting he did retire when he was around 70, but I think he um, kept at it. I don't think artists ever really retire. 
they might retire from exhibiting but they still work okay so that's the um background and i'll keep some of that color because if i want to um shave a little bit off or readjust the shape of um, one of the cakes then i can use that i'm now going to paint the shadows so i will use this darker color that i mixed and again i'm going to go for a kind of a gray a warm gray so cobalt a bit of white and the red a bit more yellow ochre that's quite a warm gray so i'm going to put that on and i'm going to paint the shadows i'm going to go over the purple because i don't want that to be showing through and down the line there it's always worthwhile working with a bit of a bigger brush and trying to get into the corners with it because it makes it much looser and expressive with your painting that's one shadow i think i'll add a bit more pink actually it's a little bit almost too brown go over that a bit that's better I prefer that color so down here just a sweep of shadow under the plate and I'm not too worried about the edge being correct because I'll correct that when I put this pale blue on and then the last one which is good because I'm running out of this color already I'll make this a little bit bigger and then I'm going to put this blue of the background on so this is very flat all the texture will be in the cakes I could if I want to leave a sliver of the purple and I might put a little bit of red there as well Ooh, this is showing yellow somehow got a bit of yellow in there i'm going to put some more white in because that's a bit too pale uh, sorry it's a bit too dark and go round the cakes and round the cake stand and then i'm going to carefully draw around the shadows and try and eliminate all of that purple If I make a mistake, then I can always dip back into my shadow colour and go over it. So when you're putting on the brushwork, you don't want to go all the same way. You want a little bit of variety. He was very much about taking background colour and drawing round a shape. So down to here and across. I think I've made that a little bit thick, so I'm going to go over it a bit with um, the shadow colour over there. do mix plenty of paint because it really uses it up the shadow color i thought i'd have plenty and um, i'm running out a little bit so i need to adjust this side here because i don't want it going as far over as it did however i don't want it entirely parallel to that so i think that will come in a little bit maybe and this will be slightly more out to the left just chop into that Oh dear, that was a bit. Uh, 
and pull into this shadow. So I'll redraw that shadow shape. It's really nice when you paint to be able to cover a whole area really quickly with thick paint. It's a real sense of satisfaction. I can see he really enjoyed painting the way he painted. So I'm going to thin that out a little bit. But I'll um, finish the rest of the blue before I go back into the shadow colour. So again, going over that purple. He worked very big. He worked a lot bigger than this. This is um, A4. So I'm going to redraw the stand, I think, with, I think I'll use, um, I think I might use cobalt. So at the moment, my plate here looks quite clumsy, but it won't do. I'll shave that. Right. So back into my shadow colour, which have very little left. And I will just redraw there and pull that down. That shadow needs to come out a bit more. And I think that's it. I'll shave that a little bit more. I'm going to paint over that anyway, so. And I'm going to go back into my background colour and just readjust my shadows a little bit more. So I've got that line's wrong. Shave this off a little bit more. Put more into that. So I'm just doing a little bit of correcting and I think that's a bit too low so I'll just take that up a bit. So if you mix enough of your background colour you can keep it to one side and if you make mistakes later on you can just uh, use a little bit to correct it. So I've got that on the edge here and I've bunched it together so being acrylic it will dry very quickly. So now I'm going to start adding colours that will um, come through when I put the icing on. So I'm going to put in reds and a little bit of orange. If I have a look on my cake here, you can see a bit of brown in there. So I might go with an orange in there and maybe add a little bit of that same colour into here. I'm going to use a smaller brush. So this brush that I'm using is a bristle brush um, and it's a Jackson Art. It's a bit old. So I'm going to put my shadows in actually. So I'm using the cobalt blue and put in shadows that I can see on the plate. I'm also looking at, um, if you remember earlier, I showed you the painting of um, quite a few cakes, all different types on stands, very uniform. 
standing to attention that's what I'm basing the way I'm painting on and that had actually purple shadows now I would have loved to have put purple shadows in because it goes so well with pink however I haven't really got a decent purple and the purple I can mix with the cobalt and the cadmium red deep just ends up looking a bit dull so I'm opting for cobalt shadows which he did use and I'm going to put shadow under there like that and also um, I want to use my dark colour again to redraw the stands okay. actually that's got quite a bit of red in which looks nice and in here oops sorry rattling the camera again with my head Fine. I'm going to start putting my colours in as I said and I'm going to mix um, an orange so I'm going to use cadmium red deep with the cadmium yellow medium and that kind of makes a little bit of a brownish colour because the cadmium red deep is a cool colour has a little hint of blue in and what that does is make a dull orange so I'm fine with that that's what I'm after a bit more. and so I'm going to um, go in here drop it down I've got my first layer of buttercream in the middle and then I have goes down there and then I've got another layer of buttercream just there like that I'm going to put a tiny line I think of red down here that needs to be thicker So he did work thick, that's going to go down there and that will mostly be painted over but it's just so that you can see the cake against the background so there's quite a texture on that piece of cake so what I'll do is I'll texture that I'll get a little bit of a, a ragged edge and the shadow underneath I think will we'll stick with the cobalt blue but I'm going to put I think some more of this brown uh, maybe in here just to let a little bit come through And I'm going to put some red around these here. That red's just too dark, so I'm going to mix my cadmium red light with a little bit of cadmium red deep. Because I don't actually have any cadmium red medium. Sorry, not the camera again. And that's going to go around there like that. And also, I think around here and I'm going to put a little bit of yellow underneath where the jam will go because I can see a little bit of reflected yellow in there and also in here I don't know how much of this I'll cover up or how much I'll keep who knows we'll see at the end and I'm going to put a little bit of yellow into here which might pop through so yellow and orange being opposites of the color wheel I'm going to put in sorry what am I talking about 
blue and orange opposites of the color wheel I'm going to put against this cobalt I'm just going to put a little hint of orange to intensify it and I think also going over what I've done here I'm going to put a little bit of orange next to this blue so I need to go a lot thicker because it's just not showing up that's it nice and maybe around the bottom edge here so I'm going to be looking at the edges of the edge of the plate. So I want to have some nice colours in there. So maybe for the top plate, I'll go for a bit of an orange red. And I'm going to put that straight over the purple. And I'm going to just properly redraw my plate. That. And I think what I'll do is go in with a bit of the, a pale purple in there as well, just here. Let's go pale yellow. Can't get my words out today. That's it. Ah, I'm happy with that. So for this one, it's going to be cobalt all the way around. And as I say, be quite bold with your brushwork. Get a lot of paint on and just do long, confident strokes because you can always paint over it and paint round it. So I'm not happy with that colour. I'll have to get some more cobalt. I'm going to go over that because it went very dull. And for the bottom old plate, I think I'm going to um, use red again. So taking my cadmium red deep and a little bit of cadmium red light. I'm going to put in that line of a bright red. Now this is where acrylic does come into its own because when it dries you can work over the top of it quite nicely whereas with oils you're going to have to wait a day or so before you can layer like that so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on the surface of the plates now they're pretty white but I don't want it yeah, actually, I could go for quite a bright white. So I'm going to take my titanium and I'm just going to go over the paper and redraw the edge of the plate like that. I've dolloped a bit, but it's all part of the texture. And where the shadow is, I'll just leave that. The shadow goes across there. And I'm going to make the edge of the plate a bit thinner. Now I've got a few colours going on there. All interesting stuff. I'm thinking that my shadow should go slightly up a bit to suggest the edge of the plate I think my plate shape is a little bit funny so I'll take it up here like that And I'll leave a little bit of that cobalt. I'm going to put raspberries on there, I think. So um, I need to think about the shadows under those. So I'm going to just put a dark red colour for the shadows. Maybe put a little bit of cobalt blue in with the cadmium red deep. And just 
push that in. I don't mind if I have a few little accidents with the white. And again, there's one here, so I'll just put that in like that. Maybe take it down a bit like that. And looking at the plate here, I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow red in there. Oops, I've made a little bit of an error there. Could leave that in. But he was quite neat, or is quite neat, with his paint and his edges. So I'm just going to put some background colour. And that is why I've got so much background colour mixed. So I can just go in there and cover that up. It's looking very garish at the moment. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to putting on the top layers though. Really excited about that. So going up to, I've checked what I've done. I'm happy with all this. So now I think I'm going to work on these scones a little bit. So I need to mix up um, a scone-ish colour. Which will be using yellow ochre and I'll use some of this white here. And I'll have kind of dark and light so I'll, I'll, sorry, I'll mix them together. I'm going to put a little bit of cadmium red deep in that. Maybe some blue to slightly cool it down. And then that's just going to be a light version. So working on these, if I go into, put my little finger over here to balance myself. So I'm going to mainly cover these up, this red here. into the dark a bit. I think there's a bit of a shadow. I think that's too light so I'll just make it a little bit darker with some more cad red deep. A bit of blue. That's a bit darker. I might actually even mix a darker colour to put my shadows in. But first of all, I'll just cover the page. And likewise on this side, leaving a little bit of the red. And the top of the cake is, what is the top of the cake? It's here. I changed it. Like that and I think I do need to go a bit darker with the shadows there under there I think that's a bit cold I might go with orange So I'd get a little bit of uh, the feel of the texture of the scone down there. And um, I'm going to go quite pale with highlights. They're a funny shape. I don't think they're going to look like scones much. And they have got sultanas in, so I'll put a few sultanas in. So I'm just tapping my sultanas in, that will do. And I think just a little bit more of the nice orange in here. Like that. 
and I was in the process actually of painting the plates so I'll go back to that so white over here and this is where I'm going to be very careful about leaving areas of cobalt and that's the shadow over there So I want to make my um, plate edge a bit thinner. So I'm going to bring it right down there. Oops. He actually did very thin edges to his plate, so I'm going to go even lower. I think he probably did use better brushes than what I'm using. And then up here. So I'll wait for this to dry and then I'll put another layer on. Oh, well, I could do it now actually. If I work thickly enough and press very lightly, it will cover what I've got on there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use a thin brush and redraw the cobalt on the bottom of that plate. So this is the way he did work by putting on a layer, then putting on another layer, then putting on, covering up what he'd done. It's quite hard to keep the hands steady. So some of his... Um, lines of colour that come through will have been underpainting and some he goes over the top with. Happy with that and now what I'm going to do is work the pink which I've been really looking forward to putting on the pink here. So I'm going to take my cadmium red deep and mix up some white with it. This will not be the exact pink I need. I could do with some magenta, but I don't actually have any, so I'm making do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a deep red. I'm going to go right up to that blue. Across here. And down and I'm gonna put a little bit of texture into this by tapping he did sometimes I saw on some of his paintings put a little bit of a zigzag in with his brush I'm not going to do that I'm just going to tap in texture there my raspberries are not going to stand out actually very well against this but never mind so a very dark color just here and also here and then take the lighter pink and just go into that there oh I've lost my picture <laughs> that back behind there and I'll take it behind where the raspberries are going to go I'd like to make them cherries actually I might just do that and then the pink in there I think that dark red line needs to go over a little bit Yeah, I'm going to make them cherries, I've decided. And the pink actually goes 
down here behind. So for the cherries, very simply painted, take some cadmium red deep, a little bit of white, maybe a touch of cobalt blue, and I'm going to put those on really thickly. So they're a little bit dark actually, so I'll just put that initial layer on. I could put a few more, I could actually have a cherry here maybe off the plate. I'll, I'll I'll put one over here. Yes, I like that. Makes it a little bit more interesting. Because although I'm painting in the style of Wayne, Wayne Thiebaud, um, I can add my own angle to it. So going over the top of that, The paler red and lights coming from above, like that, and then I'll just put a little shine in or on the cherries. Oh, I forgot the one at the side, so a little bit of the dark red in there. I actually haven't got shadows under these, have I? I don't mind that. I might try putting a shadow underneath though. So red over the top. There's a little bit of cobalt ended up in there. You'll find that uh, the more you paint, the longer you paint, the more expressive you get. And as your painting continues, you'll get less worried about making mistakes. And enjoy it a bit more so a dollop of white like that yep happy with that and I need to fill in the pink a little bit down there like that I'm going to use the color of the scone mix for the side of the cake here I still have quite a lot of it but I'm going to add a little bit of orange into it so as you can see I'm mixing into the cake color so this will really make a difference with the cobalt blue so I'm going to go over the top of this and I'm working pretty thickly I don't know whether to leave the edge um, I might leave a very, very thin edge of dot just going down there, just the hint. And again, I'm using thick strokes of the brush and going around the cherry, which will make it stand out more. down into there yeah I like that it is a bit bland here I'm going to put a line of red just here just to make it more interesting and I think I will put shadows under the cherries in cobalt that and under there and there and finally for this piece of cake the white so I'm just dipped into my um, titanium white and I've got a great big dollop here and I'm just going to run it down like that oops too much in a line and I'm dragging the pink a little bit which I quite like that goes behind that cherry 
There's also a line of white that goes here. And across here. So this is quite thick. I haven't used my gel medium yet actually. That very very thick and it does look a little bit like buttercream. That's it. Happy with that. I'm not sure about that blue line going down the edge of there. I think also the side of the cake is a little bit too dark. So I'm going to take a bit of a lighter colour and go over it. I could go with my thicker brush actually. Now that's better. It's a little bit more pastel. But some of the darker colours showing through, which is quite effective. But I think the cherry stands out a bit more. And I'll take that into that corner like that. So I think that's pretty much done, that piece. I think the problem is my line is a bit too perfect down that side. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue and just give it a little bit of texture and a nice bit of edge. That's much better. So pretty happy with that. So going on to the next piece of cake up here. I'm going to be using the same colour, which is the scone colour that I use. And I'm going to be using my bigger brush. And I'm going to take some of this, which is drying, unfortunately. And I'm just going to swipe this colour across. I'm going to wiggle it a little bit. And shall I take it to the very edge? I think I'll get rid of that blue. I don't want all my pieces of cake just to be surrounded by cobalt blue. So that is going to go right onto the edge here. And again, oh, I forgot the cream. Never mind, I can paint over this colour. So, again, working pretty thickly. I've made it a little bit more colourful than it is, I think. This is what he would have done. He would have just used artistic license. And I'm going to go straight across the bottom like that. That's better. I can keep little bits of this blue coming through. Happy with that. Um, what I haven't done is paint the background down to the top of the cake. So I still have background colour. A little tiny bit of it. I'll try and use what I've got just to go over there. Now I've put a bit of yellow in there. That wasn't very clever. Oh yeah, that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to mix a little bit using my titanium white and a bit of the red. And I think I put blue in it. And I'm just going to go over that. I'm not doing very well. That colour's completely wrong. This might do it. Well, it's close enough. I'll just go over a bit more of the background, even though I was intending to have it flat. So my scone is not looking good over that side. I'm going to put 
cut it a bit more in there like that hmm and I'll be putting the white icing on last but what I might do is put a little bit of underpainting color so I'm going to underpaint a little bit more of this color I think it might not show also there is a shadow down the back end of this cake so what I might do is um, put a little bit of that shadow in um, and of course because my shadows are blue I might go for a little bit of a purple actually I'll see how it looks yeah actually I think that's going to work so going on to the cream and the jam up here I'm going to do the jam first and I'm going to use my combination of cadmium red light and cadmium red deep and I'm just going to slap it on like jam so here in the palette there's the cadmium red light I'm running out of space and cadmium red deep and so it's going to be quite a vibrant red I need quite a bit of it I haven't used the gel yet but actually I haven't really felt the need to because I'm just not adding water to this so going up there like that does that look like jam not sure but what I'm going to do is put a darker color on it and the jam over here goes down to there yeah I think the colors not quite right and I'm going to use cadmium red deep into that to make it a bit richer and I'm putting it on straight from the tube can go under there oh I like that actually that red against the yellow really is on fire and I'm going to put a little bit of shine in the jam so I've got a dollop of white I think I pushed that on before I intended to this might be too much in which case I'll use the red to chop it down a bit so just got some red on my brush to take it out of it like that I might scumble a bit of texture onto this cake so I'll use the same color and just add a touch of white into it to get some kind of feel of cake of the sponge and maybe go a little bit darker as well in there he did do a little bit of texturing like this kind of thing so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the white of the plates although I quite like the fact that there's a blue in here so I'll just go over this side and drag it along to about there actually it does when you put the solid white on it does make it sing like that and on this plate it needs a little bit more work going over to meet the cake there And now um, it's a case of putting on the icing and the cream. So I haven't got much white, I've run out. So I'm going to have, just have to improvise with what I have on my palette. So I'm going to put the cream on first and I'm just going to splat it on like this. And you can see it really does look like cream. And that's 
I think the enjoyment he got out of this, so a bit of cream there. And I'll swap it down. That actually I think should come down here a little bit. That's better. Looks a bit more realistic. And then on the cake below, I'm going to put the icing on like that really thickly. I am running out of white. How unfortunate. Right at the end. And just down here. Like that. And then the buttercream in the middle. So the red was underneath the layer of buttercream. And I have enough just to make it quite thick. Like that. And I think on the shadows underneath here, I need to improve those a little bit. Like that. So now what I can do is look at it and see if there needs, any, needs to be any tweaking. Now I've got yellow underneath the jam here so I need to put a little bit of yellow in here and maybe possibly in here as well oh and also I forgot I need to put in the uh, sticks so I'm going to take some yellow and I'm just going to put in a stick there like that and you can see it makes a shadow I'm also running out of yellow, let's go under there as well, like that. Now that looks better, that looks more finished. And so now I'm going to just add some of this yellow, just dot it around. I quite like the idea of having a little bit down there. And maybe I'll put a little bit more. No, maybe not. I think I quite like that quite subdued. But I think a little bit into here. And it does make it sing a bit more. And I'm going to put a little line along here as well. Like that. No, I don't actually like that yellow I put in there, so I'm going to just take a dollop of white and touch the white over it and cover it up again. Like that. Now that's better. There's less of it. It was a bit too much. And I think I'll go down onto these a little bit more and go thicker because that was, it did come out a bit thin. yellow down there I'm still quite, not quite happy with the edge of that plate so I'm going to go in with red and just neaten that up a bit like that maybe oops oh that was a mistake a little bit of a dot there so I will have to get a bit of background colour and just go over that I don't want a dot really and so that I think is just about done if I hadn't run out of white I would have put it on much much thicker up here what you could do is put on a darker color because there are dark shadows in there and then just put it on top really thick straight from the tube put the white on top of the dark color so I have really enjoyed doing this and I hope you give it a go because it's great fun and you can make lots of mistakes and then just paint over them. And it really gives you the feel of how Wayne Tibold works and his thinking and um, 
yeah, it's a great, great exercise in using impasto paint. So I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.